Hi Mohit, welcome to the Alkeep show. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me here. Yes, I'm glad you're here. So today viewers, we have a pilot here. Mohit is a pilot. We're going to learn today in this podcast about how to become a pilot. I want to know the ins and outs of it, not the technicalities of it, but I want to learn for a small kid who has dreamt whenever you say plane going above you, who has dreamt of becoming one. So what is it what that we have to do? First tell me about you Mohit a little bit. um and then let's go to your childhood and then come back to your journey of how you became a pilot yeah actually i am mohit kanduri i'm basically from bangalore mm-hmm. origin from hyderabad uh, past two years settled in bangalore and in and out hyderabad bangalore uh, going and coming back so that's how it okay. is and basically it, it's a dream like somewhere okay. to be in a uniform like currently i'm in a uniform so hi fi hi fi Yeah, you yeah, achieved yeah. it i didn't achieve it that's yeah. the difference after 12th i just uh, gave my uh, nda exams and everything else then after that of you're course going to, you, you know what you're going to, to make me cry today mohit here is going to make me cry today every day today even to this date i fight with my father because he did not let me write nda exams that oh, was okay. my dream If there is anything i would be like you know that uh, craving that's my nda all right go on yeah then later on i did my engineering like joined engineering like everyone else did Okay, so um, uh, let let me take you back here. So after twelfth, you did your NDA exams. Yeah, it's uh, NDA exam comes after twelfth. Isn't that after tenth? Not exactly. Like twelfth, you need there's even an exam after twelfth as well. Okay, so that means NDA is National Defence Academy, right? Yeah, National Defence Academy. So does it involve everything? Like it it involves flying, defence, and also navy, or how does it work? It works for three. Uh, All three, ways, like army, navy, and air force. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on the criteria we choose or they give. I have no depth knowledge about how the selection criteria is done, but I just know that it's for three of it. Okay. T- and we uh, need to choose our interest while applying the exam itself. Yeah. So Not tell me this as well. Like, how did you know there is this thing called NDA, and why did you want to go into those things? Just because you want to do a job, something where you can wear a uniform. About how NDA. did I know about NDA? Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, in year two thousand fifteen or sixteen, actually, government was promoting too much of. Uh, into this defense and paper there were a lot of ads in paper as well then i just saw those ads in papers and uh, curious about it i just googled and everywhere to know that there's an exam called as nda I applied for it unfortunately i wasn't able to clear that at that point then as every other student took up engineering did mechanical engineering for two two and a half years but still there was some something inside me where i was not satisfied completely with mm. what i was doing Mm. Then in that tops and downs and everything, I just had a talk with my parents one day. That before having talk with my parents randomly, uh, I actually got a random call one day from mm. someone, certain someone. I was just preparing for exams and I got a call saying that uh, there's something called as pilot training. You, if you join here, you'll be getting so and so salary. It's very easy. It's just takes twelfth uh, physics, chemistry, and maths. That's it. And then I had zero knowledge about it. It was not like my childhood dream to become pilot or something. But that thought just just it it kind of like gave me a bit of a key, you guess. Yeah, that's what uh, I got a random call. I don't know who did that. I got. I was not able to track it back, but it gave me a seed. Mm. Then my own thoughts went into a tree. Then uh, I did a lot of research of myself, how to become, what the procedure and everything. And uh, when we do this research in Google, you know what happens is that people will get to know that someone is doing research and they'll call us back. So mm-hmm. that's when I was getting calls from a lot of people. Okay. We will provide you this lot of consultancies. I could, okay. I could say that we would give you this, we would give you that, and knowing knowledge from here and there, then I had a talk with my parents. Mm-hmm. Of course, it wasn't easy for them for me to convince them initially, but after two three days of time, they understood. Like they stood a very big support. So, are you going to discontinue engineering at this point of time? That was my initial plan, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but things turned around. I'll mm-hmm. tell you how that. Okay. Then definitely, then I. when i got an admission in a flying school applied for visa instantly at this okay. point i had okay no, you have had... to take us back here up, uh, applied for visa means that's not in india right so it's which not in india. which flying school are you talking about and how did you get to know about that flying school okay i that this when this was happening it was year 2019 mhm so in 2019 there was only one flying school talk going around in india is that uh, there was actually in there was there were options that like you can do it in india south africa new zealand australia mm-hmm. or usa okay and at that point we were all in a perception that india was very slow mm-hmm. there were proper aircrafts no proper maintenance mm-hmm. it was back in 2019 i'm talking that's a perception you you used the word yeah perception. that's a perception actually okay to some extent it was true okay but 
uh, I today let's talk about today's scenario later okay. on. But uh, mm, mm. but that point it was like everyone were like India would take around three years, four mm-hmm. years abroad would be taking you around one year or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. And then straight away I had option between South Africa and and India, South Africa and USA. Sorry, my apologies. Mm-hmm. So South Africa and USA. And ultimately, why can uh, I ask why why South Africa and USA why not Australia and New Zealand? South Africa is uh, cheaper. Uh, Australia and New Zealand are quite expensive, more expensive than USA. Oh, and the quality of flying is uh, better in US compared to South Africa. Okay, and you know this uh, perception of going to America, American understood, being, yes, understood. Sure. <laughs> so of course anyone would be interested to go America. Why South Africa? Yes. It's not that I'm saying it or something. No, no, but I get it. Uh, you're talking about general yeah. perception. Yeah. General perception that mm-hmm. go, everyone wants to go to US. Yeah. That that's how when I got into that and uh, I mm-hmm. got an admission with Treasure Coast Flight Training in Florida. Uh, repeat that again. Treasure Coast Flight Training. Treasure okay. Coast Flight Training. That's where I completed my commercial license, commercial mm-hmm. piloting license, and everything. So after getting admission over there, then I, there's some paperwork you get. I guess people who be giving for uh, applying for student visa, they'll be knowing that they'll get an I twenty apply for a visa. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that all was going on, and this was the time when COVID was just just initially booming, Ooh. like very initial. Okay. I just got my visa, got into plane, landed in US after uh, three four days lockdown. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's just like just escape very narrow bit. I escaped by going to it because flights were shut down right after that. Okay, so landed before before you land in US, I want to ask you this. Um, can you talk to me about how you got admitted? Do you have to go through any exam before you get into this um, flying uh, school, or what are the expenses? There are there is a certain thing called as DGCA examinations. Anyone who wants to become pilot after twelfth, mm-hmm. uh, they need to twelfth. Basically, they started from tenth actually. Mm-hmm. After tenth, what they need to do is that they need to take MPC or PCMB like. At any studies that involves mathematics and physics, why? Basically, that's the basic criteria to become a pilot. Is that you need okay. to be so note this point. <laughs> We need to note this point. Yeah. Math and physics. You need to have twelfth standard in physics and mathematics. There are a lot of people who ask me. I have done diploma. I have done polytechnic. Mm-hmm. Can I become a pilot? My straight away answer would be no. Conditions that you need to give NIOS. Okay. NIOS is an open examination. Mm-hmm. Is equivalent to twelfth standard. Of physics and maths, you need to give an NIOS exam. Person who did even commerce can do that, science mm-hmm. can do that. Mm-hmm. But the basic criteria is that you need to have physics and mathematics okay. compulsorily. And the fee structure? Fee structure for flying. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a very complicated fee structure. I would tell. Mm-hmm. It's not cheap. I wouldn't say that it's cheap at all. Based on country, based on requirement, it keeps on varying. From my point of view, from my personal expenditure that I've spent, the time that I went to US. Uh, My all the paperwork it took me around uh, in Indian rupees I would tell you took me around one lakh. Okay. Visa process and everything. Mm-hmm. But after I went there, it's entirely a different thing. You need to pay hourly. Per hour you need to pay certain certain amount. Yes. In India currently I guess something around fifteen to twenty thousand is going on for a for a certain aircraft. Okay. Each hour you fly, you need to pay certain money. Okay, so this is like these many flying hours you need to have to before you complete your commercial yes, license. Yes, yes. So to complete those hours, you need to pay hourly. Yes. Okay. Approximately, exactly. how much did it cost you apart from your personal expenses only for yeah. flying hours? Coming to that, personally, I would say it cost me around forty-five to fifty lakhs. For how many years? Uh, I took around eighteen uh, months, not years. Like one and a half. Year. One and a half. One and a half period. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the So period of time, like it was during COVID, so I would say that it's a decent amount in that. That I would agree with you. Actually, I would agree yeah. with you. Yeah, that is a decent. Flying amount. was a pretty good sort. Of. Flying cost me around now. Even on current days, now it's pretty much expensive than that. But the time that I did, forty-five to fifty is pretty much justified for what the amount. That no, I because b- since you said Australia is costly, that is the reason why I'm asking all these expenses. Is that I want viewers. Who wants to become a pilot to understand where what they're getting into? Australia yeah. is costly than this because it's easily. I I don't think it's that amount. I heard more than that. No, I I know that it's around seventy to seventy five lakhs yes, of Indian yes, rupees. Yes, it is. Yes. I do know that for sure because yes. I compared like of course yeah. like every other student. I also compared myself with all the other scenarios and circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so US was a good choice. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. it was a bad one. Okay. Okay. It was a good choice, of course. It it it, it does take lots of money, mm-hmm. but that's worth it. And uh, the one thing that I wouldn't say recommend anyone to 
US, the only reason is that personal expenditure. That's very expensive right there. Your rent, your stay, your home, your facilities, mm. transportation, it's quite expensive compared mm. to local mm. ones. Mm. Anyway, compared to even Australia, I guess it's a little expensive, especially in Florida, it's one of yes, the Yes, because the, the city you choose, let's say if you choose Sydney also, it's expensive, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Go uh, somewhere so that, in, yeah. That state, it was pretty much expensive. Mm, uh, yeah. that's why the budget constraints okay 50 okay. lakhs for pilot training only pilot training is justified uh, but okay. when it comes to personal expenditure we need to think about that so did you land in us after finishing your btech your engineering no actually i just dis- i was in a plan to discontinue my engineering mm-hmm. i don't know fortunately or unfortunately covid came up at that time so you did online yes okay <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you're lucky i did online yeah. And I uh, passed one sem like that. Uh, I cleared a few papers. Mm-hmm. I didn't, even now, I didn't finish completely. There's still one more year for me to do. Mm-hmm. But still. Okay, got uh, it. Certain, like one, one, two semesters just went in that phase. Yeah, you did mechanical uh, so engineering, right? Yes, I am, I am does, doing mechanical Does that help you, anyways, in dealing with flights and aircrafts? Yeah. One, one subject is very much particular that deals with uh, flying, it's fluid mechanics. Mm. So how does it work? Do they give you any theory classes like for a bit and then enter into your practical or how does that work? Entirely depends on the type of flying school that you join in. Mm. I know both types of schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, one type of flying schools for one on one or one and a half month, they just give you a theory training. They, mm-hmm. they, uh, they just make you sit and understand the basics to advance of flight mm-hmm. and then you get into flight. Okay. There are certain papers. Of course, in US also you need to clear examinations there are fa fa is federal aviation yes. authority there are certain fa examinations that you need to clear uh, mm-hmm. few people they clear all those exams before flying mm-hmm. few people they clear it while flying okay the place that i went the school that i went we were like flying and ground training was mm-hmm. together okay side by side. so is it better like so if you like clear the exams while doing it because you get the real time experience as well is it better that way it has uh, i could say it's like a Coin, like well, both, both has its pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah. If okay. you clear the papers, you you clear uh, you clear those papers. You won't be having any tension, like. Uh, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. it depends it on the person. There be no okay. pressure. Of, it depends on the person's yeah. personality of how you deal with things. Exactly. So this this okay. happens. So once you need to clear one stage, mm-hmm. the basic criteria is that you need to. Uh, there are certain things like three things in US. Mm-hmm. There's a private pilot license. Mm-hmm. Instrument rating and commercial pilot license. Okay. Can you explain? Private pilot three? license. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So what happens is that pri- you need all these three. Yeah. Certain. Oh, so, all three you should have. Yeah, you should for uh, any person to fly in India. Uh-huh. You need right. to have for CPL, you need to get PPL first. Okay. I'm PPL is private, private. Private pilot license. Pilot license. Right. Right. Yeah. So the first initial step where you get into flight training is like, you study for private pilot license. For clearing private pilot license, you need to have certain flying hours and you need to clear a FAA written paper. At the end of your course, when your flying hours are reached, like when the target is reached, when you're eligible in terms of your flying hours, but you have not cleared your uh, written exam. Okay. That builds up a pressure. That will always be there at side. Okay. Good. But if you clear it before, right. you can just peacefully fly. And certain people like, okay, there are people like myself. I did my flying and my return together and somehow it worked out and okay. I was able by then, by the time I reached the end of uh, getting my private pilot license, mm-hmm. I had both of the things cleared together. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how it was. Okay. It depends on person to person and especially in flight training or pilot training, there is nothing to do with group. It's individual, absolutely individual. Okay. Your own training, your own money, you need to do it for your own self. Yes. You need to have the curiosity. Because you're things. paying hourly. <laughs> yes, you're paying hourly. Yes. It has nothing to do with any student. Mm. It has nothing to do with any group of people. It mm. is your individual thing, your individual interest and your individual curiosity. That means one who has complete conviction can go into this. Yes, exactly. Uh, one who has complete conviction. There mm. are both types of people who are, who are doing it uh, for sake of doing it and people who are really very passionate about doing it. Okay. So exactly, it has nothing to do with any other person. It is just your individual strength, what you can think of. So this private um, license is only, so what is the eligibility of those people? They can fly only by themselves. Is is that all? Yeah, they, they can, can fly only by themselves. Basically, the thing with private pilot license is that they can't get paid. Oh, it's for your own fun. They can't get paid. 
yeah for my fun i can fly i can fly i can take my family i can take my friends but no one is supposed to pay me a single rupee for doing that oh you should not be paid okay got I it i should not be paid it's All for right. my own purpose okay got it got it okay yeah. and, the, and the second level then second level is instrument rating instrument rating instrument rating yeah yeah for an airline if you think in point of getting a job coming back to india or flying anywhere in this world like you need instrument rating it, it's so what is this instrument rating instrument for rating is like us no okay for till private pilot what to do is you see ground yes what's there on earth you mm-hmm. see that point and you fly towards it and basic navigation and everything okay when it comes to instrument rating if you go to certain height or if there's a cloud mm mm-hmm. there'll be nothing we can't see anything in in nothing like we can't yes you can't see there what's there way. yes yeah so what we need to do is we need to completely depend on our instruments yes instruments and fly even in the worst weather conditions you can't see anything there won't be any visibility yes so you have to completely rely on your instruments and it's not like you see those instruments and learn it we should be able to learn it in a procedure what is there what is like viewer how to use a viewer how to use an ils what are different types of approaches what are holding so those things will be dealt with instrument rating okay. when you have zero visibility when you are inside a cloud when you are in a worst you literally condition. depend on the computer the instrument yeah exactly you need to depend entirely on your instruments and fly mm. okay that is called as instrument rating isn't that something all the commercial airlines do these days exactly exactly that's what i'm telling if you want to be a commercial airliner if you want to fly a big plane you need to definitely have an instrument rating because all of them do on instruments Yeah, because you just literally rely on them, right? Exactly. It's Until like you land, you don't know anything. It's yes. like hundred percent we rely on our instruments. Okay, okay. I, 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 I get it when you're saying this because um, so I went on a flight not for a flying lesson. I always had this dream of flying. So my daughter has booked me the, you know, the for birthdays they book you. Yeah. To fly a flight, you're actually not flying a flight, but you are. a kind of flying so she was not literally relying on any kind of instruments except for little altitude and then we had the steering thing and she was moving it around at some point i'm like i got really scared i really got so scared and i'm like uh, oh, i couldn't handle this because the right and the left were going too fast and that day for my bad like it was very cloudy okay yeah we were going into the cloud it's not just left and right it goes even front and back So yes. you need to maintain all those things. That that yes, you need to yes. have a you proper. Yes, it's a light aircraft. Planet. It's a very small light aircraft. Yeah, light aircraft. So yeah. Okay, okay, so the instrument rating is done, and then next level is. Then no, you need to go to commercial. Okay. That's the next level. Mm-hmm. Commercial means that where you can get paid. Okay. You're eligible to like. So in this instrument rating, you, so what is your what can you do with the instrument rating? You can't. No, we can fly in the worst. We we can fly in worst weather conditions. Nothing. It's like we are eligible to fly through a cloud. Or But still, you can't scenario. get paid. Basically, you can't get paid. No. Still, okay. we get instrument rating on a private license. It's okay. a rating, not a license. Got it. And then next to commercial. Okay. Next is commercial pilot license with mm-hmm. instrument rating is because I already have an instrument rating. Yes. So I'm commercial pilot license. Okay. It's like you need to fly two hundred to two fifty hours. Mm-hmm. In my eligibility was two fifty. few okay. schools eligibility based on the different things it's it's a complicated subject mm-hmm. so 200 to 250 we can just keep it in india okay. it's 200 in us certain parts it's 250 so okay. i finish my 250 not then i got my commercial pilot license okay after this comes multi engine till now i was talking about single engine okay so can, can you please explain in a very layman terms where we can understand single engine okay. flights can like tell me like an example what are the all the airlines all the aircrafts that you guys fly in uh-huh is a multi engine of course yeah i and single engine is that that only has one engine and the front will be a propeller only one engine the one which has the thing in the front like it will be moving yeah, like this yeah exactly oh, okay, that's okay, a single okay. engine okay okay exactly. where are they used it, where so. are they used generally they are used for flight training purpose okay right now in today's So they use it mostly in flight trainings or else somewhere if anyone wants to do some recreational flying or something like that okay single engines are like very low low flying like very low altitude aircraft okay got it okay they are And not used for any commercial purposes or to carry any passengers or nothing like that it's just for right. fun to people do that okay got it mhm but uh, yeah for commercial purpose for passenger purpose for cargo whatever they use only multi Multi engine. So, how many engines are we talking about? Multi. When we say multi, usually it's two. No, no, no. Okay, it's not. Two, like, you very, very big. <laughs> in aircraft. all, in all the movies, we only saw two. <laughs> it's always yeah, two. Yeah, in all the planes, you just see two. Yes. It's usually it's two. Yes, it's two. Uh, even the commercial airliners, it's it's just two. There are few aircrafts which has multiple, like four, 
think mm. something like that that mm. that's very rarely that we see them okay okay so even if it's a boeing even if it's a airbus even if it's a normal yeah. one it's too based on the model again it, it, it's mm. like uh, boeing what is the top best model is that i can say 777 still carries yes. two engines yes and there that's is airbus a3 777 is huge right it is very huge so that, it is that's huge. where all the international flying goes on yes yes and has to come from us to india it's mostly 777 Yes, yes, and then the Airbus. Airbus is huge too. Airbus A three twenty is another vastly huge aircraft. I I yeah. went on A three eighty once and I loved it. A three eighty. Yeah, A three eighty has multiple. Like I guess it has four. It has so four. That is, yeah, it has many. Engines. Okay, I went four. into the cockpit. The pilot was very good enough, and then he gave me a tour of the okay. cockpit. I got more scared after <laughs> looking at the cockpit. <laughs> I had the most luxury sitting in the back trust me the pilot didn't have that much luxury I was like of course like you need to fly a plane Yeah they need to fly a plane I was imagining that they would get all you know like luxury because they're flying us but uh, I went into the cockpit after we landed I asked for permission I'm always curious so you know I went in I went in the cockpit I'm like we flew through this he flew through this you know I was like oh my god <laughs> It's a small space of area where people sit, and we try to fly a lot of instruments around. Yeah, a lot of instruments around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, need to, we need to be able to reach them if we have that comfortable chair. We can't reach all those things. Yeah. A lot of things. There's a power. There's a throttle in the stream. Yes. So yeah, we need to be able to reach them, and everything is in our reach. Yes. Yes. And and That's so uh, for the whole the whole thing together. So the private pilot license and the um, the next one is the instrument rating, right? The instrument instrument rating. rating and then the commercial license. How many hours should we say all together? All together comes to two fifty hours. Two fifty is all together. Two hundred pinpoint hours. Two fifty hours. It's a pinpoint of two fifty, but uh, it's it's no, it's uh, a big no that you can finish it exactly on two fifty hours. Okay. Let's of talk about your first time. day when you're flying. How did it feel? Ah, uh, yeah. First day when I'm flying, it's like. Did you want to run away back home, but you couldn't because it's COVID? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, it, it's the thing that I chose. Yes. That I want good. to be good. So it's good or bad. I need to do mm-hmm. that. It's I need to learn it. Yes. yes. Of course, there was a lot of curiosity. Very much curiosity. Like I was very much curious. What is this? What is that? What is he doing? It's mostly instructor flying. Like no one will give me a plane and just tell that. Yes. 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 Flying. It's the person who's teaching. Instructor will be doing the major flying. He'll just teach me how to turn left, how to turn right. That's yes. where it starts from. Yes, that's what I it's did. It's called turns. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> so yes. Even a proper normal turn will take a very long time to learn because yes. we need to do it very precisely. Yes. In a proper way. Yeah, because it's jumping. The little right, the flight is going down like so fast. Yeah, exactly. So we have to imagine our place being that we are carrying around three hundred passengers behind us. Yes. As a pilot, I'm used to it. I can jump. I can do anything. I can go yes. up. I can go down. Yes. I know yes. what happens. Yes. 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 Yes.
yes it's again it's our, our own expenditure there are two ways after finishing your commercial pilot license so mm-hmm. where i was i finished my commercial pilot license in usa okay what is next step now i have to come back to india mm-hmm. it's like if i hold a, C, a commercial license in usa i am not be eligible to fly in india because i'm there i'm a pilot over there not in india okay so what happens is that here you need to do a conversion of your license you need to convert your american license to indian license when you had your commercial pilot license in us that means you can fly only in the us yes so if you want fly it in any other country you have to convert your license so what is exactly. how, how does this uh, conversion okay this this how it works with us license there are certain countries that i can fly with us license okay um, list of few countries like some african countries or something but in india it's very much mandatory that you need to hold an indian valid license Mm-hmm. from dgca which means directorate general of civil aviation needs to give you a valid license mm-hmm. even if you're done in any country like us australia mm-hmm. and you need to convert your license from that to this so that is a process in order to you do to that fly. what is what is it that you have to do uh, again there are some certain ground exams mm-hmm. conversion exams called mm-hmm. as a composite paper and a regulation paper right. that you need to give it with dgca that those are uh, written Mhm. Maybe let's say multiple choice questions there are ground paper. You need to do some 20 to 25 hours of flying based on your current uh, recency or something. Uh, if it's more than 6 months you need to fly certain hours if it's less than 6 months then you need to fly certain hours. Okay. Based on your requirements. Then there is one very important exam called as RTRA. Mhm. You need to have an RT license. So very much mandatory thing that uh, that that you need to become a pilot you need that you need to get a commercial license in India. So you don't have that in US the same the RTRA? No, the RTR is not there in US so to become What? a commercial life. Why? What is the difference? You don't need radio communications, or what is the difference? Yeah, we do need radio communications. That's an English-speaking country. Okay. Basically, uh, so communications are pretty much done in English. Okay. So what is this done? India is not a like it's not an English-dominating uh, or English-speaking country, right? So much. So we need to have a radio license for that. Uh, um, you have to explain okay, what is this radio license. Okay. Yeah. What is this radio license? Let me tell yeah. you. Radio license is that. Uh, Basically, uh, a pilot ATC, ATC is the air traffic yes, controller. Yes, we yes. communicate through certain medium, to certain yes. radio. In 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 a very different language, nobody can understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we need to communicate through them. To communicate to them, we need a proper set of communication. Like I can't tell randomly whatever I I can. The other person needs to understand what I'm saying. What you're talking about? Yes. There's a certain language and there's certain phrase yes. that we need to know. Yes. To for us to know. for them to know are we are eligible to use that phraseology mm-hmm. and we are eligible to use like we are eligible to use those communication mediums and communicate to tower okay and to cockpit we need to have a certain license called as radio telephony license radio telephony restricted air you know what um i am an un- under assumption that because flying generally involves all kinds of countries flights right generally airports carry all countries flights so Yeah. you generally assume as a third person you assume as an outsider that you only uh, handle it in english and obviously all um, when i whenever you hear those radio controllers speaking you know all the different languages you speak in i'm sure those are your commands and the phrases you use in it but we yes. assume it's english so it's not english it is english okay but it's i in- would say it is like trimmed english okay right it is it is very much english mm-hmm. but there are certain standard There's certain language, there's certain phrases in English that we need to use while communicating. Can you give me an example? Okay, it's like A B C D E F G. We don't call A B C D E F G. We call Alpha, Bravo, Golf, Charlie, Delta. Yes, you do. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's a uh, aeronautical phraseology. Okay. It's A for Alpha, B for Bravo, C for Charlie. Yes, yes, yes. And you and and you talk um, name runways as well, right? Yeah, there are runways like runway two seven. Yes. Or runway zero nine. Yeah, and and you have um, you name. I don't know, like weather. Also, you have particular names for weathers, also, right? The weather, yes, the wind, are, um, the direction. We see like wind direction. Yes. Ah, uh, then the certain type of cloud. For example, there's severe turbulence. Hmm. Medium turbulence. But is there any particular reason for you to use that kind of phrases? Any particular reason? Yes, there is a part- very particular reason. Okay. Back, uh, I don't know the exact year. Um, sorry about the knowledge, but there was a very very <laughs> bad. Uh, mid air collision purely happened because of the communication problem between two different languages like their uh, slang mm-hmm. or their way of talking and the other pilot way of talking the pilot on other aircraft way of talking was so confusing for the atc that they were not able to understand what the both 
of the machinery right. where he was asked to uh, climb and the other person was descending they right. both ended up being at the same altitude and they collided with each other okay understood so since then like they, that's one of the incidents yes that all the aircrafts or all the pilots or all the communication that happen in yes. aviation needs to happen at certain terms yes whatever the language Today, you speak wherever the origin you are from the, that term has to be heard to the atc yes exactly even i may be from india there may be other person from canada italy the person china, italian, whatever. the person mm. who is like chinese japanese mm-hmm. mm. when we come into aircraft all of us speak the same term like climb descend and uh, yeah climb descend maintain yes. mm, roger main, roger yes so mm. all these terms are pretty much clear for us and we need to know them okay right. and all these terms are in english itself it's not uh, okay. any different so language. then why is it that the radio uh, the license which you have in the us it must have contained the same kind of like phrases right so why do you need an extra license in india then that's what i had told uh, us is basically a native english speaking country but still the terms are the same thing right as you just explained to us that if even in us we do need country, radio license yeah i'll tell you yeah. even in us we do need radio license mm-hmm. it's only when we are flying from us to another country okay now there are certain very much countries around us say for example there's bahamas close to florida yes mm-hmm. a person has to fly from in usa to bahamas he he do need a radio license okay. because the other there that is the basic thing but when we are flying inside the country inside us us i'm talking about uh-huh, uh-huh. there's no not required no requirement for radio license oh, there are people it. who do radio who do get radio license it's not a complicated thing over there yes but it was inter- mandatory for me no understood understood it is going to make things better yeah. when you are yes, involved yes, with all in, kinds india of... why do we need yes yeah, because... india why do we need we are not a native english speaking country yes yes and uh, we have a very different and typical slang in each part understood of the completely country. now i get the point because even every state speaks a different dialect and different language yes we need a common you know the radio language for the pilots to understand each other i guess okay yeah a few point. terms like uh, nine yes uh, nine nine and nine will be like same thing in hindi it's nine and english it's nine that's so, so we true can't, we cannot yes yeah, we can't person they not seeing us they just hearing our voice and they need to be able to know what we are saying so if we yes. use a certain term we sh- for sure know that what he is trying to communicate to us why we need radio license is it true that uh, the same way how we have traffic down here you have traffic up there yes get to know the aircraft where if it's uh, behind us ahead of us above us we get to know yeah. that there's other yeah. instruments there are certain radars and there's even always yeah. there's atc that will help us yeah so we get to know but there is traffic there's very much traffic does traffic jam happen there up there it does it does happen yeah and what do you do when it happens there's a lot of traffic you just stall over there no we don't stall we airplane can't stop in air so we hold we go to a certain point and we keep doing circles till the traffic clears you and then we you can't stall up in there you can't stall in there no you can't it's it's oh. floating object so it has to be in a constant movement okay let's see i told you i'll ask you some stupid questions this is one of those <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, i understand because helicopters can stall actually yes but yes. airplanes can't okay the airplane That's... needs to be in a constant movement it... and why is that you have an extra turbulence when you're going through this rain and clouds and everything yeah there is a difference in pressure in the atmosphere when this happens yeah winds will be in a very different direction it will be violent sometimes mm. and thunderstorms are very dangerous Yes. so when all this occur there will be an absolute turbulence there will be severe turbulence and this all occurs when there is yeah. normal change in weather yeah do you think a human being who wants to become a pilot should would you say these are the qualities that must for that person or you will just develop on the way ah uh, not like that it's like uh, you need to have certain qualities of course you need to be passionate determined disciplined is it easy and, uh, would you say it's easy mohit or it's hard personal opinion i would say mm. few things are easy like being disciplined being hard working nowadays if any person likes something he will do mm. that's not a thing you know why i asked you the question that is it easy is that i do see everybody thinks that um dreaming is very easy but actually exactly. implementing them and going after it is very very hard you okay. can absolutely if you do it with absolute love and passion towards it you will really very much enjoy it uh even though we have so much computerized everything is computerized in an aircraft but how much of the pilot's decision do you think is most key absolutely everything is 100% have, everything is based on 100% on a normal day when everything is fine nothing you won't be able to see yes. anything it's just a plane flight from one place to other place you're just flying and you're just landing 
Yeah. Certain times there'll be when the weather is bad and there's a lot of severe turbulence and you need to make a quick calls. Yes. And suddenly, okay, let me tell you this. There's a sick passenger. There are 300 people. Anyone may be of anything. There's yes. a sick passenger in your aircraft and you need to make a choice what you need to do at the next moment. And we have a drills for it, of course. Like if there's a sick passenger, we need to land the plane no matter what. Okay. Not not on roads or somewhere, but we need to plan, land plane in a nearest airport. So and weather deviation is one of the very important thing that it entirely depends on the pilot. Oh, the so, way weather deviation depends on you. Yeah, weather deviation entirely depends. We have an alternate airport. So if weather is bad here, we need to go there. We we they you will you will be informed ahead, right? Continuously, you will yeah. be informed about the weather. We'll be informed when we notice the weather. But is is the final decision yours? Make, is the final yes, decision yours absolutely. to take it or not? Final decision. Yes. Oh. Okay. ATC will tell. ATC will deny. They'll be like, our airspace is closed. You can't enter into our airspace because there's a lot of weather. There's thunderstorms going on. Or there's something. Yes, okay. It's, ATC won't tell me to go to that airport. It's my choice where I have to go. W- wouldn't ATC be giving you like something like 50 kilometers away or 100? We do have some options for you. They, do, they won't give you any options. Yeah, they do give that. They, they do they give, give you options, option, but the call is yours. It's it's my call absolutely. What I need to do. Because you know call. the situation in the flight, right? How, how yes. important it is and because oh, I know how much is... fuel I have left. Yes. I know how much fuel I have left. I know how many passengers are behind me. And yes. how far my plane can go. Yes. yes. If ATC gives me 200 nautical miles or 200 yes. kilometers, yes. let's say in that terms. Far, yeah. I might be having only till 70 or 80. Okay. Yes. I can't take that choice. Yes. So understood. I have understood. to do it. Yes. We have all the safety procedures like you need to carry so much of a fuel. Passengers need to be so much of weight. You can't carry this much. That's very depth into a subject. Like mm, if mm, I start mm, telling mm, about that, it'll mm. go. It's just, but yeah, we do have certain limitations, but it's ultimately our call where we need to land. And yeah. yeah. Initially, we know which, which airport is nearby and what is our alternative. We have to choose one. As a passenger, we are passengers, right? We think takeoff and landing are the most important things for us. Yeah. So yeah. what is the most, uh, you think is the most important uh, where the pilot will be like, he will be 100%. On it is it the takeoff or the landing or even between it's takeoff i would say on a very mm. big aircraft uh, it's a takeoff mm. because we need to be aware of all the scenarios all the circumstances around us even landing is very much uh, landing pretty much it's not autopilot or uh, sometimes not again landing we it's very important but i understand so the takeoff and landing are both equally important yeah, takeoff and landing are very much important phases of flight okay. we can reject takeoff but landing we have to do it no matter what. If, if anything happens, we have to land it no matter what. We can't just stay in air, right? Yeah, no. I can be like, okay, I'm abandoning takeoff after a certain limit. But we need to be cautious both the times. Yeah. Be yeah. very careful. Yes. Yes. Uh, and major air accidents usually happen in phase of landing, not in phase of taking off. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are two, three incidents that really happen while time Until unless a bird control. bird hits your engine or something while you're taking off. Yeah, we ha- we always have an option to just switch off the engine and just do something when we are on the ground. Yes. Once yes. we are in air and we have to land no matter what. Yes. In all the circumstances given, we have to land. Is I'm it confused. the pilot's job to go around the... Um, and that's, that's a little confusing for me because whenever you... Before you actually board the flight, you actually see that pilot is checking... You know, yes, going around that's the called flight. as uh, pre-flight check, security check. Yes. Yeah, but I don't do understand that, that. If if the pilot is doing that and also this, isn't that so much work for him? Like, there shouldn't shouldn't there be another another staff who should be taking care of that? Why is it the pilot job to? There are a lot of staff who take care of that, like maintenance. Yeah, but why is it pilot job to to go around the flight and look at the physical every checks of it too? Why is it? Yeah. It's because ultimately it's a responsible of the pilot. The responsible of captain, I would say, especially, but uh, I would say both the pilots. We are responsible for 300 lives over there or uh, 150, 120, whatever the number may be. Okay. We are responsible for all their lives. Mm-hmm. AM, me or uh, mechanical engineer, all those people can just give us an approval. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I need to know whether my flight is safe for flying or not. It's very much mandatory that pilot has to do three flight checks before getting on to either co-pilot or captain anyone can do that okay usually it's co-pilot like juniors do that but still that's so nice to, to hear you know that, that you you are you guys actually feel so responsible so i feel so safe now <laughs> yeah it is safe that's what <laughs> yeah. it is very much safe otherwise how are we flying all these years you know we are flying nowadays like very yeah. easy right so it's, thanks it's one thanks of the most to... safest 
means of no, transport i i I, I, get, I i get it yeah so thank you guys for that and how many, what is the regular shift for a pilot like how long is it okay it again night times day times whatever in 24 hours a pilot is supposed to fly for 8 hours only 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 8 hours and then uh, one month is only supposed to fly 100 hours this is the limitation that dgc has given us right so we can't fly beyond 8 hours in a single what day. if the flight is continuous for like 14 15 hours the same flight so the other pilot takes over yeah there will be shifts rotations they will for some they, that will be managed that will be covered okay. but in 24 hours it's like 8 hours in domestic i'm talking about in my level that yes but i'm supposed to know yes in domestic so that that hap- yeah in india in india okay and i don't think so in india from one corner to other corner it won't take 8 hours but there are lot, that's what there are a lot of uh, legs that we need to go there are lot of sectors that we need to Go. Yes, but the so but the but the shift covers from the uh, point where the flight takes off, or the from the point the pilot comes into the engine airport. starts. Engine starts. Are you friends proud of you that you have become a pilot now? Your parents? Yes, they are very much proud of me. My friends, my parents, and everything. They are yeah. very much proud. Uh, are you pr- are, are you proud that you took the decision that day and then you flew to US? Yeah, I am proud. Uh, what happens here? I'll tell you how it goes on. It's like. Uh, people telling lot of things people not saying things uh, parents have been my biggest support i know that uh, other people friends are they like when it comes to money money part mm, mm. that's where things get very tight that's yeah yeah uh, so it's like you people tell you have spent so much of money it's, it's absolutely useless what you have done i know what i spend money for it like i ultimately spend it for my own education it's ultimately it's education it's learning yeah it's learning what you are doing is it's like absolutely you are learning something and you are you are trying to build it as a profession yeah i'm not saying that i learn so much that's why it's worth it no that's not what it is it's like following my dream uh, and that's what i tell it, tell everyone uh, whatever this all things are good to hear this is like yeah very much fancy pilot's responsibility you enjoy you need to enjoy what you're doing and not yeah. just me like you yeah. you need to absolutely enjoy what you're doing i enjoy flying i mm. very much enjoy flying my way of flying it's like um, i'm not saying that i'm best at flying but everyone has their own pros and cons but i I know that I know my limits I know my restrictions mm. I know rules if you follow rules that's it yeah, you you can become best pilot by following rules by following rules so rule, yeah the nothing but just follow book no one is expecting you to do miracles in it mm. just that just follow those basic rules you'll be safe be safe and you're the winner here and you believe that if you follow the rules you will definitely be safe Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's basically it's it's the rules. Everything is has to do with rules and certain things. So not even once you're scared when are you when you're up in the air. Yeah, I was scared. I was. You were scared. I'll tell you how the scenario was. Yeah. It's night time, dark. I'm alone in aircraft, and my aircraft goes into a cloud. Not just me. Anyone would be scared. What is the difference? Outside also is dark, right? The sky is also dark. You know, I can see street lights down there, or I can see moon. I can see stars. But once I get into cloud, there'll be nothing. Night time, flying in cloud, it's it's scary. Until you come out of Alone. it. Until I come out. I tell you, clouds are so dense that we won't even see what is in front of us. If there's a literally, if there's an aircraft in front of me. I know. I I, I, I I experienced it. We try to avoid the clouds that day, and I experienced it. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Every time you take the flight up, and until you land, every time you land, does that give you that feeling of achievement? Every time you land the flight. Mm, yeah, exactly. Every it's, it's every like, time. It's like how it was taking off. Let me tell you. Hmm. I just put full power and I go on and I feel like I hold my breath. I yeah. observe this one thought for my breath, and once the plane is up in there and goes, then I leave it off slowly. Like okay, that happens to everyone. Yeah. Nothing in my life gave me more much happiness or satisfaction than that. Breath. And what happens when you're landing? When you're landing, how does it work? Landing I'm... brain works. It's it's like it's completely brain. What happens while landing? Nothing to do with the procedure. Like what you need to do. Okay, now do this because in landing there'll be a lot of things that you need to do. You need to put the flaps up. You need to put your brakes. You need to. Maintain the center line of the runway. Then you need to do a wind correction. So, like quick, 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 quick. Just, just and you need to clear the runway as well because there's another plane coming behind me. Oh yeah. All these thoughts will be clear and go to the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you need to just go off the runway because otherwise someone will. Yes. Yes. Hit yes. me from behind. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, landing this, this all things are uh, so brain will be working a lot. All, all the body organs will be. Engaged into something, hand yes. in hand here, mm-hmm. this hand there, my leg holding rudder or doing wind correction, something like that. Okay. So landing is a very busy, busy thing while flying. Okay. Mm, so let's like, talk about the financial part. Does banks give you loans to become a pilot? Let's say even when yeah, banks do give loan in certain ways. Is that let me tell you straight away. 
what mm. it takes to be a pilot as on okay. today in indian mm. rupees i would say one crore is the investment that you need to do on becoming a pilot just getting the uh, license not getting a job just getting the license no i'm telling till the job okay just, mm. just getting license you can get it within 60 lakhs okay mm. 40 to 60 is what i would say mm. but getting license alone like i got my license alone i can't just go to air india and start flying you need to do something after that you need to do be rated you need to do type rating you need to do airline training these are all the expenditure that we need to spend for ourselves people think that getting cpl is the end no Nowadays, you, know, you know what the assumption is let's say if you have a license what i would assume is that an airline would pick you and then train you and hire you that's what anyone else would assume no, that's that's not uh, how it works Oh. So if I have a license, what happens is that I'm, I have license on my aircraft. That's the thing. That's the difference thing. And that's the thing of being a pilot is that you need to constantly keep on training. Now I need to train on certain air aircraft type of an aircraft like Airbus A three twenty, Boeing seven three seven, or triple seven. I need to choose that, and I need to get trained on that in a simulator that is called as type rating. Yes, mm. at my expenditure. That's my own expenditure. In twenty nineteen, when people told me we. they were like uh, that time this wasn't a trend i finished today so i know that at in 2019 type rating was something not so familiar people are not so much familiar with so type rating is basically I'm, simulator yeah simulator okay it's the uh, layman terms i would tell it's the simulator yes. I, i let's call it as type rating because people okay. will, will not understand that okay uh, but now i'm glad that people are very much familiar about that you need to do type rating for it no matter before getting hired or after getting hired type rating is very much mandatory it's like a practice isn't it yeah it's like you you know i know to fly a small aircraft now if yeah. person give me a single engine aircraft i know how to fly it, but i don't know how to fly a fly uh, airbus a320 right yes i can't straight yeah. away go into cockpit and start flying in that yes so i need to be trained on that aircraft yes yes that a small part of training to familiarize with that aircraft and cockpit atmosphere that's called as type rating and then we get hired into an airline Okay, what would you be? What would see? This is yeah, also for knowledge. Like, what would be the uh, income? Let's say income on certain. Uh, let's say today I've heard and one or two places I've seen is that they are getting paid around two and a half to three somewhere. First Lax. officer. Flex. First officer is the first job that you get in an airline. Yeah. Uh, two point five to three lakh rupees per month. Per month. Okay. Okay. Two point five to three lakhs. It might vary based on airlines to airlines, but it's that it's means hundred hours a month, right? Hundred hours a month. No, no, it's for forty hours. Forty hours a month. Okay. Yeah, forty hours. There's a slot for forty hours. There's a slot for sixty hours. Hmm. Uh, let's not get deep into that. It's like uh, let's say from two to two lakh fifty thousand to three lakh rupees would okay. be your pay. Okay, first Currently. officer, and then you're going to be right. through. Then then become a senior first officer, second hmm. officer, uh, captain. Hmm. that is one one step yeah one about there yeah this is the only profession that your uh, experience purely counts there there are other professions that if uh, your 30 years experience or 15 years experience like you are like over experienced yes yes and then you fall into this recession category yes yes and I they want the i want and they want the fresh brains yeah they want the fresh brains but here is the uh, till now i have noticed that this type of uniform jobs are the only ones that give absolute value to your experience like the more i'm experienced the more chances that i get a better pay or better uh, skill okay. or better upgrade yeah so being experienced is of advantage here in this field yeah but there are but loans the banks thing. the banks do give loans yeah right? banks do give loans but uh, you need to have a collateral for that they give you loan for uh, pilot training it still comes on a student loan category but yeah of course it's like you know, i'm saying we are talking in terms of uh, 50 lakhs to 60 lakhs hmm so without a collateral bank student give that okay yeah it's uh, pilot training is basically not like a complete uh, pg or degree or anything like that it's it's a for it's you know basically like a diploma you would say in indian terms it's called as vocational course it's a professional course yeah like uh, it's not like equivalent to degree or something no, but it is more than a degree isn't it it is it is more than in a degree in its own way it's like a, a common man would say that but if you see on a paper I wouldn't be like I'm graduated from so and so university and become a pilot. That's still not like that. It's it's a professional training. Yeah, because it's not that kind of a 
degree yeah, it's not, that, it's kind not that kind of, of a job training. or it's not that kind of uh, education either exactly. yeah it's practical education so it, that means it's a professional and skill training rather than exactly going it's, it's like a skill class. training yeah, absolutely yeah, you're right about training yeah is there anything else you want to tell any small kid who wants to become a pilot or any yeah, student sort of, who uh, wants to become a pilot yeah first like me don't discontinue on engineering i was lucky not not you guys wouldn't be lucky understood mm yeah and second thing is that of course financials matter very much mm. okay i know it's a dream of many middle class people or uh, anyone to become a pilot but i would say at cost of what mm. today people like me are lucky enough that we were our parents are able to spend so much of money do investment of so much to get into an airlines mm. or to become a pilot uh, right now see at my situation on my current scenario i would say that i'm lucky Mm. but uh, people go to certain extent that they'll be so blinded with their dreams and fantasies that they want to become at no matter what they pressurize their parents or whoever so much and they go into a mental depression for not doing that mm. so i would say that uh, think twice before you do it so you would say that um, it doesn't only need your passion and your dedication it also needs a support system also exactly you need you definitely need a support system for that it's not very easy very without much. the support system it's that's not, why that's what it's not at all easy without support system and don't trust anyone that's one more thing don't okay. trust any person who would say that there are 8000 jobs you will get so much you do this i'll give you a job no don't trust any person who tell that i will give you a job it's your skill your mind and your individual here you are doing your own training your parents are spending money for you alone and it's your responsibility to follow your own path each person destiny is like uh, destination is the same all will get commercial license but each person will get it in a different way i went to us i flew there and i'll get it in by doing conversion all those things person who did that in india he'll directly get a cpl because it's in india itself so mm. everything will be taken care of mm. so we all have different paths but our uh, destination our ultimate target is to get cpl yeah and choose the cheapest option i would strongly recommend choose the cheapest option mm. because for our whole life we won't be flying single engine cessnas point mm. yeah uh, we are just training in that aircraft it's it's like people tell i want very good quality of training not at all good aircraft it's like come on you are only flying for 200 250 hours there should be a point in spending more money yeah i think in the future save. where you are spending in simulators and you know the tape exactly the type, the type the of the more you more. save while doing your commercial license mm. the vast and the quick that you can get into an airline ah uh, got it you so need to start more, saving your money yes. you need to start you mm. need to start saving money from the very initial point so choose the cheapest flight school i'm not saying that go to a flight school that is very much like out <laughs> of it and they are doing it no 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 in those That's good true. options like compare compare while you're doing, you're don't, don't yeah, you're doing don't just jump in yeah don't just jump blind you're doing comparison yeah see that is safe and cheap mm. if you save money while doing your cpl so the, the basically your point is that this is also equally important people think that commercial license i got it and it's done no this is where you also have to be funding money yeah this is also very important yes, only person who has done commercial license and who is jobless since covid knows mm. the value of being a type, type rated mm. jobs are opening up i can tell you a lot of my friends mm. have got hired mm. no 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 it will come so. definitely it will be there it, but it is I going to come it's not like yeah i understand where you're coming I'm, from yeah yeah because they won't get the point right if you hold a commercial license and then you don't you didn't do this there's no point you don't have exactly. a flight to fly also <laughs> exactly that's what i have done like my example i've done commercial license and i've done multi let's think that then now if i don't do type rating and there is an opening for a person who who holds a type rating i won't be eligible to apply for that there are there are yeah of course there are there are jobs that uh, without type rating also air, airlines do hire recently in the audit hire for uh, people who have no type rating that's again it's the cycle you need to see the market on a current day scenario i would say type rating is required yes uh, maybe after 6 months uh, people they don't require type rating airlines can just hire directly hire and they can give that uh, training by themselves yes yes so it depends on the that demand right day, if the airline has a demand it will going to acquire and then give the training exactly But, on yeah. demand and market scenario you yes. need to motivate yourself Yeah until now you it's like very dreamy right and cloudy the podcast and now it's coming to practical the ground landing <laughs> Yes this is the ground reality I'm saying This is the ground uh, reality we landed <laughs> Yeah the uh, financial truth mm. you need to know it uh, before you take up this opportunity like it's like uh, dreams I know mm. I know it's I am a pilot and I can say that people say mm. that you are pilot you can say whatever it is I I I have personally suffered myself mm. and I've seen a lot of people suffering that every pilot has this thing 
Yes. Like when it comes to expenditure and financial part of it, there is you need to keep on doing. I think it's something like it. a doctor until you get succeeded and you're famous. It's really hard for yes. a doctor also. I think it's yes. similar because you have That's to it. you have to present yourself. It's you who has to do things. Yes. It's not like other jobs, right? Yeah. Yes. Support system has to be there. Yeah. People, yeah. it's not going to stop. I'm telling you uh, right away on today's scenario one. One crore is the budget that you need to keep on have. You mm. need to have it with you ready, and then you can sustain in this industry. Okay. Or else you have to discontinue at some part, which okay. is very sad. Okay. Which is sad of that course. you are passionate, but you can't do that. Yes, of course, because this this job is not like something else that you can get an alternative. You did it with such passion, and you have to get into exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. That is the reason yeah. I mentioned that. Yeah. Finish your engineering first. Yeah, it's not like you 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 learn data analytics today and then you go to artificial intelligence tomorrow and you go to something else tomorrow. It's not like that, right? Mm, yeah, it's not like that. You are trained to become a pilot and you will have to become a pilot. That's no it. No matter what, even if it takes one day or one year or ten years, that's become the ultimate target. Become a pilot. Yeah, you have to become a pilot. You don't have any other choice, and you have done your investment to it. That's the hard fact. Thank you so much, yeah. Mohit. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank I, you very much. Uh,